What is up, everybody? Katie Blanchard, Shroth Physical Therapist here, um, coming on here live as we launch our first uh, week in the Facebook group. So today we're going to go over scoliosis. Why can't we just bend the opposite direction of a curve? Thank you so much for being here. If you're on here live, please put in the comments live so that I can give you a shout out. If you're watching the replay, please comment replay so that I also know that you're tuning in. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, so scoliosis. How is it defined? Why can't we just bend the opposite direction to correct a scoliosis curve? So basically scoliosis, we used to think that it was just the spine bending in one direction. But now we know that scoliosis is side bending of the spine coupled with rotation of each little segment of the spine. So those two things together, side bending and rotation, is what defines and diagnoses scoliosis in a spine. So let me show you um, what that may look like in a spine here, okay? So in our spine model here, we have the head at the top, the hips and the pelvis at the bottom here, okay? And then just basic anatomy wise, we have every single little vertebrae coming down the back of the spine here. And then you have your sacrum as a part of your pelvis at the bottom, okay? So um, each little vertebrae has a few different points. So the one that is pointy and points directly towards the back is called the spinous process of the vertebrae. And so you can appreciate that here on the spine model, all these little tiny points at the front. And then there's two transverse processes on the side. So these are the ones on either side there. And then you have your um, spinal cord that goes down the center of your vertebrae and then there's nerves that's all these little yellow things that come out to the side um, and go to innervate all of your muscles so that your body can function so that's what the spine looks like this is what it looks like from the front so you have the bodies of the vertebrae and then as i turn you can see the side of the vertebrae and the transverse processes and then the back with the spinous processes so when we talk about side bending and rotation of scoliosis what happens is each little segment here starts to rotate. And if each segment starts to rotate a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, that's what starts to cause the bigger curve in the spine, and that's what you see on an x-ray. But also, with the side bending and rotation, there's something called torsion in the scoliosis spine too. Um, and torsion is each little part, each little um, vertebral body here, starts to kind of twist. So if this is the vertebral body, like this, it kind of starts to twist like this. Like if you were wringing out a towel, but wringing out each little piece here instead of it being totally flat. And so with that, this is what happens during scoliosis. So. If each little segment starts to twist, and this is gonna be exaggerated just for demonstration purposes, but if each little segment starts to twist, 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 like this, then you start to get that rotation in the spine, which causes the overall side bending, okay? So you have the head, at the top here and then the spine has rotated enough to make the larger scoliosis curve and so this one goes to the right here at the top and then to the left at the bottom and that's your classic s-shaped curve of scoliosis okay um, so basically scoliosis is not one-dimensional and that's why it's not easy to treat and that's why we can't just say if my scoliosis goes to the right then i'm just going to bend to the left and reach overhead and it's going to reverse itself okay um and then when you have all this rotation and lateral deviation and torsion going on in the spine 
You also have the effect of gravity on the spine as we just function in everyday life. So if this is your scoliosis here, and it goes to the right at the top and the left at the bottom, your S-shaped curve, and this is, again, um, exaggerated for demonstration purposes. Um, so this is a thoracic right, a lumbar left, scoliosis curve. And then if you add in, you know, the gravity of every day pushing down on the head, you can see how that can cause more lateral side bend and that bigger curve um, as we go through life. And that's why scoliosis can be progressive um, as kids age um, and they're still growing because of the effect of gravity on the spine and we can't do anything about that because that's the world um, how the world functions and that's how we live within a universe of gravity um, pushing down on us okay so what do we do in order to improve scoliosis then if it's not just bending the opposite direction scoliosis is 3d so we have to address all three dimensions that I just talked about the lateral side bending, the rotation, and the torsion. So those three aspects that make scoliosis three-dimensional. And so what the Schroth method is, it's a breathing and positional technique of exercise that does three things. So first, it helps to derotate all those little segments of the spine, and then it helps to expand and elongate so it helps expand what we call the concavity of the scoliosis curve. So basically, this is convex, the side that the curve goes towards. Concave, like a cave, it's open on this side over here. And so we want to expand that open as much as we can um, to redistribute the load of the body more towards center. Um, and then you also want to strengthen. So the Schroth method does, does those three things in that specific sequence, okay? So first, derotate. Second, expand and elongate the spine. And then three, strengthen it within that position, okay? So that's why we cannot just bend the opposite way in scoliosis. And that's why the Schroth method helps to do those three things to help straighten the spine in children and adolescents where their curves are still very bendy because they're growing and they're flexible and we can make a big change in their spine, okay? So just to recap here, we'll draw some things out so you don't forget it. So basically scoliosis okay, is 3D. So 3D, so it's not just a flat thing, okay? Um, and so the three things that make it three-dimensional is side bending, side bend. I don't know if you could see that or not. I'll try to zoom in here for you. Rotation. and torsion. So these three things together make scoliosis 3D, and that's the nature of scoliosis. And so with Schroth, we're going to derotate, elongate, and expand, and then strengthen the spine to improve the spine and hopefully stop the progression of a curvature decrease pain and help your kids function more optimally, okay? Um, so if that was helpful, please comment below the words valuable. If you learned something, I'd love to know what you learned. So comment one thing that you learned through this presentation and we'll kind of chat about it in the comments. And then of course, if you have any questions, please throw them below in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Um, and so this was the first day of our series throughout this whole week where we're chatting about different topics of scoliosis. And so I will see you all again next time tomorrow night 
at 7 p.m. Central. Um, so thank you again for being in the group, and I hope to give you value through this whole week. And if you're enjoying it, feel free to share with friends and colleagues um, who may have scoliosis and who may benefit. Alrighty, have a good night.